If you're a teacher or a trainer or present to groups of people, then you know what these are. They're whiteboard markers and we use them to write on whiteboards of different shapes and sizes in order to communicate ideas. In fact, comment down below if you get a little bit excited when you walk into a training room or you go to the store and you find whiteboard markers of different colors. Except for lime green, which is a horrible, horrible whiteboard marker color. I don't know why they even make these. Nobody in the room is going to be able to read what you write on a whiteboard in lime green. It's not going to happen. But that aside, what if I told you that there was a tool we could use, a digital tool, that would allow us to have all of the colors of the whiteboard markers, plus a whole bunch of other features that we simply could not get with a physical whiteboard. It's Microsoft Whiteboard, and it's a digital whiteboard product. In this video, I'm going to do a big tutorial on the Microsoft Whiteboard because it's gone through a lot of changes to reach the point that it is at right now. And it's a very interesting product with a bunch of features that make teaching remotely and in person a lot more effective. Remotely, I can use it with Microsoft Teams. I can share it on the web. I can collaborate with people in real time. I can share my screen and, and run the application. And in a classroom environment or in a meeting room environment, I'll often take the digital version of the Microsoft Whiteboard, have it on my computer, and project it up to the screen so that we can all collaborate and see what's happening in front of the class. It's a very useful tool. Now, in the description below, I've listed all of the various features that I'm going to demonstrate in this video, and there are a lot of them. So you can go and check out the description and you can find a specific feature that you might want to have some help with, or you can watch the entire tutorial and actually become quite adept at working with the Microsoft Whiteboard. It's a useful tool. I think you're going to like it. Let's go check it out. There are three different versions of the Microsoft Whiteboard. We have the web-based version, we have the application that we can install in Windows, and we have the Teams version, which we get to by clicking on a share button during a Teams meeting, choosing the whiteboard, and then that'll share the whiteboard. And we have a choice when we share it. We can either present only, or we can collaborate with others that are in the meeting here. And don't worry, you can always change your mind. So if I present the whiteboard so only I can edit, it'll tell me that only I can edit the whiteboard right now. But if I want other people to come in to edit, I just have to go into the settings and I can say other participants can edit, and then we're going to have that as an option. You can see that it's going to have the same menu items that I have. I have the create menu. And here's a very important aspect. We want to have connected experiences available that's turned on by your administrator. And this allows us to do things like copy images into the whiteboard. Let me show you that. So if I go and grab some images that I have downloaded on my computer, what I can do is copy the image and then I can paste it into the whiteboard that I'm currently running in my Teams meeting. So now we can collaborate on the image, I can make annotations to it. If other people can edit, they can make comments. Let's stop sharing that for now. We'll go to the whiteboard uh, online, whiteboard.microsoft.com, and I'll make this a little bit bigger. And you can see here, same interface, I've got the same create menu. I'm going to demonstrate this later, but same settings, I can go in here, I can actually go in and share out the whiteboard. So I can share with other people within my organization. I can copy a link and have that shared. I can see different whiteboards that I've been working on previously. So you can see all the different whiteboards that I've been working on. But let's use the application version for the demos in this video. So I'm going to do most of my demonstrations using the application version. Again, familiar interface, so it's nice and consistent. Again, I can share out. I can do all sorts of cool things. I can share it out with people in my organization, allow them to uh, work with the whiteboard so we can collaborate, get the create menu. So we've seen all three versions are very consistent. They all have the same controls. Now, one of the things I am going to do here is in the application version, you can see I'm going to format the background. This is applicable to all versions, change the color, change the texture, and I can really make things stand out in the whiteboard by doing this. So other things that I can do is I can go in and I can drag images in. Again, this is the connected experience here. So if I grab an image, I can paste it into the whiteboard, make comments on that. We saw that with the Teams version as well. You can see I can create a whiteboard that I've created previously. I can go in here and paste into that whiteboard. So I can paste from one whiteboard to another whiteboard. That's very handy. I can go in and I can do things like I can go and use the inking menu here. I can change things like the size of my pen. So I can change the color of my pen, the size of my pen. 
Another neat feature of the whiteboard is that I can also go in and add arrowheads to my lines. So if I choose one of my pens, I can add an arrowhead. So let's just write hello here. I can go in and zoom in on text. So if I go here, I'm at 800% zoomed in. So you can see I'm at 800% zoomed in. I can go back to 100%. Things that I can do is I can go into a pen here, choose that arrowhead. Then when I draw with this pen, notice it puts an arrowhead right on there for me. So this is handy if I want to point to objects and such. I can just use the arrowhead. I don't have to draw the arrowhead. You can even do a double arrowhead if you want to connect two objects together. So if I want to show the relationship between a couple of objects, it'll put double arrowheads on the line. We can turn that on and off. We can choose multiple colors. We have lots of options. Normally I turn the arrowheads off. I might have one pen with an arrowhead on it, but normally I turn that off and I just go and clear that from the pen option here. Another feature that we have is a highlighter. So I can choose a highlighter to highlight elements of the whiteboard, choose the color of the highlighter, choose the size of the highlighter. That's handy. And it's usually handy if I want to highlight some text or something specifically. We also have a laser pointer. Now the laser pointer is very useful because of course you can use it as a laser pointer, but when you point to something, the line you draw disappears after a brief interval. I really like this for doing things like circling objects. So I could circle an object to draw the attention to that object, and then the circle disappears so I don't end up with a cluttered whiteboard. I can choose different colors for the laser pointer, which I think is really neat as well. So you can go in, I can circle something, after a period of time it disappears. Notice that the laser pointer stays. The eraser has two different modes. I can either erase a partial stroke or the entire stroke. This has become very useful. So if I do something like erase the partial stroke, I can go in, choose an object. Let's uh, go, let's go here and clear the canvas. So I'll just go create a fresh one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some objects. So let me go in and draw, I don't know, let's say do a circle here and we'll draw another object, for example, a triangle. And you'll notice that because I've got in settings to enhance shapes, it automatically clicks into a nice circle and a nice triangle. If I go to erase a partial stroke, notice here it doesn't erase the entire object. Even an object that's been enhanced will allow me to go in and erase portions of that object. Then if I go in and say erase the entire stroke, you can see that typically if I had a circle here and I clicked on erase the entire stroke, it would take out that entire circle. But now what I can do is I can create it so that if I go in, I can just erase portions if I've created a discontiguous line between those objects. So that can be, that has a lot of possibilities for when I'm teaching, I can make a perfect circle and just take portions of it out. A big thing with the new whiteboard as well is the return of the ruler. This was uh, missing from the whiteboard during one of the iterations, but it's all back. In fact, all the features are back here. So let's just clear off the canvas. It keeps the ruler on there because I've selected that. And if I go to the ruler here, what I can do is take a pen and I can go to the center of the ruler and spin my center mouse wheel and it will show me the angle that the ruler is at. Plus I've got the measurements along the side. Here it's important though, I'm drawing a straight line, here it's important to make sure that we have our uh, zoom level to 100% if we want these measurements to be accurate. So if I change my zoom level, um, it's going to keep the same markers on the pencil, but I want to make sure that I change it to 100% zoom if I need accuracy in the measurements. So you can see here I'm at 89%, I want to make sure I'm at 100% to get my measurements correctly. I can use my center mouse wheel to scroll in and out as well. One of the things I can do as well is I can lasso the objects and then I can copy this object. I can move them around as a, as a unit once I lasso them together, but I can also go in and I can copy the entire structure and make multiple copies of that, or I can clear the canvas or delete them, whatever I prefer. So if we go in here, let's go to the create menu. Let's take a look at some of the neat things that I can do with the create menu. I can insert individual notes or I can insert grids of notes. So an individual note, when I paste it in, I'll get this individual note. And again, let's just zoom in so that I have it full size here. So I'm zoomed into 100%. Let's grab that there. Um, so if I go in here, you can see that I have the note. One of the things that you can also do here with the notes 
is you can go into the note and modify the properties. So if I click on the pen, I can put in text. So I can say hello world here. I can go in and have reactions. So now I can attach a reaction to this note, such as, you know, I love this idea. This is a great piece of code. I can change the color of the note. So I can go in and make different colored notes. Of course, you can trash it. I can make a copy of the note. This is really handy if I want to make multiple copies of the same note. And you will notice here that with these notes, the reactions are not copied. So you have a reaction here that I like it a lot. These other copies of it do not have the reactions copied over. They're fresh and without reactions. So that's handy. I can also put alternative text into the note, which is very important for things like accessibility. So we want to make sure that we have accessibility with all of the objects in our whiteboard. So this will uh, feed into the accessibility features of Windows. And then with the ellipse here, if I click the ellipse, I can also have layers. And this applies to all objects that I have within the whiteboard. So I can send it to the front, I can send it to the back. So it will be behind or in front of an object. It might be help if I do a different color here. So you can see that this one note here is sent to the back. So it is hidden by other objects in front of it. I can bring it to the front. So it is in front of other objects that it's that has that are behind it. So lots of useful handy features there with the notes that we can use. And I use notes quite extensively. They're like having sticky notes. I can also lock the entire whiteboard so that everything moves together. That's handy as well. And then of course, if I want to move individual elements, I can unlock it. If I go in and I make a change here, to the, the notes, I can also go in and well, I'll clear the canvas for now, but I can also go in and I can grab a, a single note, bring it in there. I can also go in and I can add text. So let's grab, add some text in there. So I'm gonna add some text. I can either grab the text and then grab text and I can paste the text box in here, type text in here, like hello world. And then what I can do is I can make the modifications to that text. So I have the same modifications, change the color of the text, trash the text, modify the text, alt text, lock it, bring it front, bring it back. One of the things I normally do though, is I'll just right click onto the canvas and you can grab notes and text directly from there. So I find that easier than dragging the text box over. So I just right click, paste the text in there. So I just do the right click, it's a lot easier. Uh, same with notes, they have a few features that you can just right click and you can still have all the same modifications in there. So, you know, there's, for me, there's no real need to use that text create menu item, but it can be useful if you want to click on it. I can also highlight the text, make it kind of, make it kind of cool in there. So I can highlight any text that I might have. I can laser point to any text that I have in there. So it's all the same things that you would expect. Now, another thing that I can do is uh, again, I can go to the create menu here and I can bring shapes in. These are nicer shapes than the shapes that I can draw. So if I'm using my pen and I draw some object, so if I draw some object on this on the screen here, like a square, it'll clean it up and make it into a pretty nice square. But if instead of using that, I use the create menu and insert a square, notice that it adds a fill to the square, a color that I can change, as well as an outline to the square so I can change the border around the square. So I can then trash it, of course. I can copy it, I can do alt text, front, back, all of the things. You can do the same with, with other objects that you create, but when you're using these shapes, they're a little bit nicer, and you can make a nicer whiteboard by using the shapes in the Create menu to change colors, to change outlines, all of these, these things that I can do. So these are nicer shapes. I like these shapes quite a bit. Then we can also go in and have reactions. Unlike the reactions to the notes, so I can do my individual reactions to an individual note, these reactions that are part of the create menu are sort of a nicer icon, so I have a better icon for it. So I really love this note, I can put that icon on there. I can go in and applaud something that was done, so you can increase the size of the object as well, you can modify it. And they're just a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, so you have some nice reactions that you can put in that aren't attached to the note, but you can float them wherever you want them to go. Images is always a popular thing to bring into a whiteboard. So I can bring images, I'll clear the canvas off here again, make it nice and clean. I can grab images from my device. So for my computer, I can go in and in my case, because I'm using the application, I can go to my downloads folder and I can pull the images in. 
When I'm using the web-based version, I'm going to be pulling them from OneDrive. So it is a good habit to get into if you're planning on using the Teams, you wanna you know, go in and, and use the OneDrive in order to do that. I can do things like modify. I can send the image to the front or to the back. If I wanna draw on the image, I wanna send it to the back. And so I can go in here, put a whole bunch of objects in there. And then um, I could go in, put a note on here. Now you'll notice, for example, with the note here, that if I go in and drag it here, the note, because it's the last object I put on there, it actually is in front of the image because the image is in the back, but I can send the note to the back. So now you can see the note is behind the image, but the objects I drew on the image are still on the front. And I can also go in and erase either the entire objects that I have on here by using the whole line or the partial eraser. So I can make decisions of, you know, what I want to keep. Now I can go in and erase the you know, portions of the line that are contiguous. That can be handy as well. So you can see here, I've got the, you know, just this one item here. I've got DNA. So I'm looking at DNA. Let's add another image. Bing images aren't there yet. So Bing, Bing images are coming soon. But I think with the combination of my device, um, I don't really need to search. A lot of times I can go out on the web and search on my own, and that's where I'm gonna get the images. And you can cut and paste from the internet into Whiteboard. So if I go to something like pexels.com, which is a royalty-free image website, I can find an image I like. I'll just take the stock photo right here, open up the photo, right-click on the photo, copy the image. So now it's in my clipboard. And then I go here and I just paste it in. So I don't necessarily, the, the Bing images will be nice when it does arrive, but I don't necessarily need it because I can just go to the web, copy and paste the image in. Again, I put the image in there and you can see I'm gonna take DNA. Maybe I'll put a shape in here like an arrow. And we're gonna have a project here on my whiteboard here where what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert some human DNA into trees and we're gonna make tree people. So you can see I'm building a whiteboard for my tree people plan. So we can see that. Now, one of the most powerful features of the whiteboard are templates. These templates are great. So let's clear the canvas again. We'll have a nice clean board here. And let's do a, say a strategic, uh, we're gonna do some strategic planning here. I'll do a cost benefit analysis, drop that in here. It's a little bit small because it automatically zooms to fit everything in. I'm gonna use the fit to screen, which brings it to a size that makes it easier to read. And then I can always scroll in using my center mouse wheel as well. So I can get an idea of what is the cost benefit analysis. I can go in and I can scroll in and out. Um, I can go in and I can make changes to this. Another thing that I can do is, let's say I have a whole bunch of objects, I can do Control A to select them all, copy them, and then I can use Control C to paste them. So I'll create a new whiteboard. So if I copy everything off the old whiteboard, either paste it or hit Control V to paste it, now I have those objects on the second whiteboard. This is a great way to create template whiteboards where I create one, copy all the objects, put it into a new one, work with the new one, but I still have the old one. So there's all sorts of different templates there I can go in and I can use. Documents are always important to be able to bring into a whiteboard as well. So here with the documents, I can go and grab recent files from OneDrive. I can go to my files and you'll notice if, well, so I have some documents in here. Let's bring in say a Dremel tool manual. It'll go to that PDF. It's a recent document that I worked on and I can import that PDF or just select pages from a multi-page PDF make annotations on this PDF. So I can do all sorts of things. I'll just draw a square around the word Dremel. I'll go in and highlight, you know, there's the, the lock button that's on there. And I can go in and make, you know, maybe I want to say, I don't want to put Dremel in there. I want to put some other wording in there. Oh, but maybe I didn't want that. So I can go and erase the line that I just scribbled on there or partial erase. So I can go to partial, partial erase, take out some of the highlight. Maybe the highlight was a little bit too much. I just want to highlight the lock button on there. And the nice thing is, of course, I can then reuse this PDF document. If I go to documents, I can also go in and I could choose a PowerPoint slide deck and you can choose Word documents as well, but I'll just show PowerPoints here. So I choose PowerPoint and it goes in and it shows a PowerPoint slide deck. I'm choosing a single slide from my slide deck, pasting that in. And then that slide acts as an object that I can move around on my whiteboard. I can go and make changes in here. Like for example, this is way out of date. I have almost 20,000 subscribers now. 
In fact, I don't have quite 20,000, so make sure to hit subscribe and like if you're watching this video. And I'm almost at 2 million views for the lifetime of my channel. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, yay for YouTube. But anyways, more yay for the Microsoft Whiteboard for letting me show you this. So I'm going to go back to Documents. Now, here in the Documents, it is important to note that I can go in and I can see recent documents that I've been working with. But what's kind of important here is that I'm I, if I go to my files, I'm not seeing my desktop. I'm seeing my OneDrive. So these are my OneDrive files. And one of the things is to get into the habit of putting what you need into OneDrive so you can find it. You can go to Microsoft Teams and grab documents off of Microsoft Teams as well. So you want to make sure that you're using your OneDrive. And later on, I'm going to show you why that's important. Because with the OneDrive, we can do some really cool things. So let's have a look here. Let's go in and uh, we'll grab a, a new whiteboard or we'll grab an older whiteboard. What do we have here? Just wait for them to come in. So actually, let's go in and rename this whiteboard. So if I go in to rename this whiteboard, I can give it a new name because if all my whiteboards are called whiteboard, that's not going to be very good. So one strategy is to spell the word strategy correctly. So we'll just change the spelling there. So now I've created a whiteboard called strategy plan. So I have strategy plan. That's the last whiteboard that I worked on. So it's going to be here. If I go to OneDrive, you can see now OneDrive is storing all of my whiteboards. So if I go in and now the, the cool thing about having all of my whiteboards stored in OneDrive is that I can sort them however I want. See how I have folders in here? I, it's all in, the, in my case, it's uh, alphabetically stored. If I click on the whiteboard, it won't open it up in the application. It'll open it up in the online whiteboard. So whiteboard.microsoft.com, it'll open up my whiteboard environment, but it is a very handy way to be able to sort by name, file size, the date that I modified it, all of the ways that you would expect to work with a file system I can use in Microsoft Whiteboard. I can launch those whiteboards just by clicking on them in the OneDrive environment. So by having the OneDrive environment, here's a hiking demo that I have. So I can go in here, I can share out the whiteboard, I can move it to a folder. So for example, if I'm developing a lot of whiteboards for uh, delivering different courses, I could have all my courses in their own folder. I can use Teams locations for this as well. I'm going to move this whiteboard into my YouTube folder. When I go into the YouTube folder, even though it's in a folder, I click on it, the whiteboard comes up in the web interface. So now I have this, you know, this folder here. And if I make a change to it, so if I make any change, this is going to modify the whiteboard. And because I've modified the whiteboard here, so if I go back home, right? So this whiteboard has now been modified. You'll notice that in, in my case here, this whiteboard now appears as the first whiteboard in my list of whiteboards because I modified this at 10.07 p.m. today. So I'm doing this at night. So you can see here, I modified this at 10.07. When I go into, say, the whiteboard application, it's going to be the last modified whiteboard. So when I go into the whiteboard application, if I want to use that, it's going to show up as being the whiteboard that was last modified at 10.07. So therefore, because I made that change, hiking demo. And if you don't get it right away, you might have to hit F5 to refresh. But here, I go into hiking demo and I can see there is my whiteboard that I modified. So we go in here. I can also export this out either as a standard or high resolution image. So you can do this and you can do this with all the versions. I, don't, I shouldn't even call them versions of whiteboard. They're just different interfaces into the consistent version of whiteboard. Here is an issue though. It does save your whiteboard as whiteboard with a numerical value. So even though this is called the hiking whiteboard, it will be seen as being just whiteboard. Now, the other issue that I was having here is I can share it out with everybody. That's great. So I can share out my whiteboard. I can even export it and I can uh, then share the document that I created or I can share the whiteboard, allow other people to collaborate. Let's take a look at working with the Microsoft whiteboard in Teams for collaboration. So if I go in, I'm going to have a meeting here. So let's start up a meeting. So it's myself with Bruce Wayne. So this is my team's interface. This is Bruce Wayne's team interface. So it's me talking to Bruce, Bruce talking to me. So I've started up the whiteboard. That's the image that you're seeing on the right hand side. I'm going to go in. 
I'm going to make modifications to it. You can see that other people can collaborate on here. So I have that there. And if I go in and do something, so let's go in and maybe put a create menu. We'll just put a reaction, thumbs up. Whiteboard is super cool. So I'll give it a thumbs up. See, it appears on Bruce's. And then maybe Bruce goes in and says, oh yeah, I checked to that. So he's gonna go in and he's gonna put a check mark in here. So he puts a check mark in there and it appears on my whiteboard. He moves it, it moves. I go in to write something on my whiteboard. So I might say something like, you know, this is Frank. So we'll go ahead and we'll write that out. And you'll notice that it's showing up on Bruce's white version. He's just, we're looking at the same whiteboard. So it's showing up on Bruce's screen at the same time. And Bruce goes in and he says that this is not Batman because Bruce Wayne is not Batman. We all know he is, Bruce. You're not fooling anybody. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you've watched this entire tutorial, then you've seen a lot of the power that Microsoft Whiteboard brings to our teaching, both remotely and in the classroom. And I hope that you'll comment down below on ways that you're using the Microsoft Whiteboard in your own classrooms and how you're avoiding the green line marker. Horrible, horrible, horrible thing. There's a yellow one. I don't like that one either. Can't see it. No point.